Hey everybody, it's Dan the Get School Dude once again with another Git tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about using Git Flow to avoid uh, creating multiple duplicate cherry picks in your repository. So today, since we're going to be talking about Git cherry pick and manipulating some branches, I highly recommend you go over and before watching this video, watch the introduction to Git cherry pick video. And super important is this Git branches aren't branches video. If you don't have a thorough understanding of how Git branches work, I'm going to lose you really fast today. So if you've used Git cherry pick before, you'll know that it is a way to apply uh, the delta content of a commit at a different location in the tree compared to where the commit was first created. This is great for implementing a hot fix, some type of bug fix across branches when you need to quickly patch something uh, with respect to the branch that you're on, but unfortunately you end up with duplicate commit history. So today we're going to talk about git flow and how we can use a branching strategy to avoid this problem. So you may have heard of git flow before. Uh, I have searched the internet for a good image that describes how this works and I cannot find one. There are a lot of them out there that look like this, uh, which I would consider not helpful at all because it shows branches in an incorrect way. You can see here it's showing here's the master branch and it goes this way and here's where hotfixes are and here's the release branches and it goes this way and the develop branch and feature branches. And This drawing is super confusing to people that don't understand branches because branches don't work this way at all. So what I'm going to try to do here in the next few minutes is explain git flow uh, in a visualization that I think is a lot more helpful. So let's start with the basics. I always draw the commit tree with time going upward and here's an example where we have a very small commit tree. The master branch is at this commit. The dev branch is at this commit. Now as time marches forward, people create topic branches and the topic branch moves as commits are made on it. And then eventually the topic branch gets merged into a bleeding edge, uh, bleeding edge branch. In this case, we're going to call that the dev branch. So in this workflow, master is uh, considered the stable state. Dev marches along as uh, people integrate their topic work with it. So even though we only show a couple topic branches here, uh, in a large team, you'd have a whole bunch of these things all happening at once, and they all merge into the dev branch. So uh, it's common, too, to tag particular commits. So I'm going to show that by uh, doing a square with sort of a little indicator showing that this commit is tagged, for example, with a v1.0. So this would be an example of a released type state that we have tagged. And if you're familiar with how branches move when we merge master up to the tag state master just fast forward zips along this path and it's now coincident with dev so here master dev and the tag all point to this exact same commit now i'm going to sort of fast forward and show you a commit tree uh, that has a lot more history in it and because i only have so much space here i'm collapsing some of the more complicated history parts and just showing it with this notation so when you see this this means there's a lot of history in here, but it doesn't matter. We are only considering, you know, the, the latest point and the point that it started from. So, for example, there could have been some work that went in here and dev marched ahead. Even though there's topic branches collapsed in here, we're not going to visualize those because they're not that important for this demonstration. So in this particular case, dev marches forward. Uh, when we get to a state where we're ready to release, master moves up to that state and we tag that state. So, for example, the, the first release was v1.0. The next release uh, in time, as time goes up, is v1.1. Master and dev are coincident there as soon as the release happens. So I just went ahead and fast forwarded here to show you, okay, as time marches along, there's a v1.2, a v1.3. And in this particular state, master is still at the v1.3 and dev has moved along. So this is where our tree is when we're going to start this demonstration. Now, in this case, we don't actually need the master branch, but it is common for groups to keep their master branch at what is considered the last stable state. So here it's coincident with v1.3, and dev is the bleeding edge of our branch as of today. So if you're familiar with cherry pick, we're about to start cherry picking some stuff. So let's say, for example, that 
uh, on the dev branch or topic branch that came off the dev branch, a developer has found a bug and fixed it in this commit. Now, the first reaction to this is, uh-oh, our tagged release states may also have this bug. So we have to investigate and see where this bug was introduced. Now, if you've seen my git bisect video, you can actually automate this process and find the exact commit where the bug was introduced. But we're gonna go ahead and skip that and just pretend that we already went and did the research, we found where the bug exists, we rolled back to v1.3, we rolled back to v1.2 and 1.1, and we noticed that these two releases have the bug, but this release doesn't, which means it came in uh, somewhere in this area in the commit tree. If we need to apply this fix, if it's a critical bug fix, we need to somehow get that fix into the states of these older releases, because if you're get a software product that you're delivering to a customer you want to be able to patch that state and you can't just give them the latest state necessarily because the latest state is considered unstable so we do this with cherry pick this is an example cherry pick the original commit here we do a git cherry pick of that content and all of a sudden we we get a new commit here with the same delta content and if you're familiar with how branches work master was here and now master is here because it moved when we made the commit on it. And in this case, I'm showing we've also created a new branch here. This is what I call a release branch, v1.3.x. This is the branch that we will put hotfixes on as we find them like we did in this particular use case. So since we already know that this bug exists at the v1.2 release, we also have to cherry pick it down there. So we do the same thing, except since the master branch isn't down there, we just create the release branch v1.2.x and that's where the cherry pick uh, ends up. So I just want to point out that these release branches are pretty common. Now this naming doesn't have to be the naming that you use, but the X indicates that there may be further minor versions that we end up tagging um, and that this branch will support all minor versions in the 1.2.x series, if that makes sense. So for example, we may choose to add a minor version tagging here once we apply this fix, we want to tag it as well as uh, having the branch there, the release branch there, so that theoretically whoever the end user is can just get fetch and then get checkout to v1.2.1 and they have the fix. Same thing goes for v1.3.1. Now you'll notice uh, here, this is the original commit where we had the fix. And just for completeness, I have drawn dev moving up here as we merge that content into the dev branch. In uh, this use case, we just assume it was done on a topic branch. So the, the point here now is that dev, master, and uh, both release branches now have the hot fix all in their Git history. So we're going to go through this process again, but with a blue commit but we're not gonna go through all the sub steps. I'm just gonna jump right to the end state just to show you uh, how this approach will scale with more and more hotfixes. So let's say we find another hotfix blue. We end up having to find which uh, releases the, the bug was in. And in this case, instead of just these two releases and dev being affected, it actually goes all the way back to the V1.1 release. So in this case, we take the blue commit from up here, we cherry pick it here, here and here and we do the exact same thing with the release release branch naming and the minor tagging if we choose to do so so with this approach each time we find a bug fix we have to cherry pick that work onto all affected release branches and this means that the tree has several commits each containing the same delta content you might be thinking is there a better way and there is so we're gonna go over a whole nother approach to doing this exact same thing, but first we gotta rewind a little bit. Okay, remember a couple of minutes ago when this is where we were, we are at the state where we found and fixed the bug off the dev branch. Instead of cherry picking the bug fix onto the affected release branches, let's do something different. We're going to apply this fix at the earliest release in which it exists first, then we're gonna merge that commit into the release and dev branches, and then we're gonna throw away this original commit. It sounds complicated, but I'm gonna walk you through it. First thing we do is we get cherry pick the content onto the earliest release state where it exists. Now that we have this content at the earliest possible state, instead of cherry picking it to the next state, 
we merge the commit that fixed the problem into every release and dev branch ahead in time. So in this example, we have merged this state with where master used to be. Let me back up here. So master was here. We merge the content, master moves up, the release branch that we created is here, and now both of these branches have their v1.3 content, but they also have the hotfix that came in from v1.2.x. Since this content is built off of the v1.2 tagged state, and we know v.1 or v1.3 is fast forward ahead of v1.2, the only content coming in on this merge is the content associated with this commit. So in order to get the fix into the dev branch, the bleeding edge branch, we do the exact same thing. Now in this case, since dev is fast forward of master, we can just merge master into dev and we'll get the fix, but we could also merge this commit directly into dev and we'd get the same end state even though the commit history would look slightly different. Now notice, this is our original commit where we fix the issue on dev. But we don't actually need it anymore because dev has the content through the, through the parental lineage of the merges. So we can get rid of it. So take a look at this tree now. For the red commit hotfix, we did the exact same thing as we did earlier, except every release in dev branch now has this fix, but there's only one commit in the tree with that content. Let's go ahead and, just like in our previous example, add another hotfix, the blue one, to see how this solution scales compared to the previous one. Remember, this one was identified first at v1.1 and exists in all the branches newer than that. So we create our release branch at that state with the hotfix uh, at the first location in which it appears. So now we need to merge this commit into every release and dev branch ahead of it in time. And when you do that, this is what the tree looks like. Notice v.1.2.x is here, and when we merge it, it moves ahead. It gets a merge uh, commit that has two parents. The same thing happens with the master branch and the v1.3.x release branch, and the same thing happens with the dev branch. I had to draw the curved line here just so that we could visually see it. And now the dev branch and all of these branches has this blue commit content in it. So with this approach, there's no duplicated commits, but the tree starts to look a little gnarly. It's all these merge commits that get created with merging the hotfix content into all the release and dev branches. So let's go ahead and compare each approach side by side here. So on the left, we have the approach that we went through in the first half of this video, and on the right is the approach, the Git flow approach that we have covered just recently. With an at-a-glance view, this just looks better to me. And so I have listed here pros, the history quote unquote looks nicer. Now I put that in quotes because oftentimes when I start asking questions about why people want the tree to look a particular way, they don't have a good answer besides they just like it. So that's something to keep in mind, but there's no denying the fact that this is visually simple to look at and this is not. So one of the cons, another con of the get cherry pick approach is that, you know, these bug fixes, these commits that came in here are duplicated once per actively supported release in dev branch. Now this actually bloats the size of the repo because you have to commit this content in multiple locations in the tree. Now, if each one of these fixes is a one line change to an ASCII source, C++, Python file, something like that, it doesn't really matter. I mean, that's going to be minuscule compared to the size of the repo. No one's going to care. But imagine that this commit actually contained a fix that was like data changes. Let's say 10 megabytes of data changed as part of this commit. Well, now every time you apply that commit, 10, 20, 30 megs, and then if blue was the same, you can see how that would add up quite quickly by duplicating the commits in the tree. Another thing that is not obvious but is a result of this approach is that the original bug fix commit becomes difficult to determine. So if you didn't apply these cherry picks and you're looking at the tree later, there's really no way to know which one of these uh, blue or red commits happened first uh, unless you start digging through the dates. But I guess what I'm trying to get at is that it's ambiguous to figure out where the fix was first applied. Was it applied here first and then cherry picked here and here? Or was it applied here? You see what I'm getting at? So that kind of information can get lost with this approach. 
With the git flow approach, there are some significant pros. There is a single commit for each fix uh, that supports all branches, release and dev in this example. So the original bug fix commit is clear because there's only one of each. One of the cons here is that it's just visually unappealing. The history has more merge commits, making the tree look gnarly with all these parental relationships. So at this point, you might be asking, well, get school dude, which one should I do? And the answer to that is, in my opinion, choose whichever one you think is best for you. Uh, especially in the case where you don't care about the size of the commits, feel free to use this git cherry pick approach. This approach is technically better. It scales better uh, as you get more and more release and dev branches and the history is cleaner even though the parental relationships uh, look kind of nasty but the bloat of the repo is kept to a minimum so it's efficient with respect to repo size and it's clear exactly where the fix came in first one last thing you know we touched on git flow today but i just want to mention that you know git flow has a lot of variations and what i showed you here is a very basic uh, implementation of git flow and it's basically just a branching strategy it's just a, a a set of rules for creating release locations with tags and or release branches and then applying hotfixes in particular ways to keep the history optimized. That's all git flow is. So when you see a confusing diagram on the internet that's drawn incorrectly, send them over to this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Dan the Git School Dude and I'll see y'all next time. <laughs> Hey there YouTube fans, it's Dan the Get School Dude here. If you're like me, sometimes it can be difficult to learn a new concept just from watching a YouTube video. That's why I've decided to create an entire suite of training programs that can be delivered in person or even remotely. This training really takes things to the next level. We're talking PowerPoints, hands-on exercises, jokes to keep people awake, Q&A, the whole nine yards. If you think your company could benefit from a more formal approach to training, check out continuoustech.net slash training to take a look at the training programs we offer. Thanks for watching.